Hi folks, this is the squirmy wormy that people have been asking me to tie. Uh, they've seen it in this month's uh, total fly fisher. Uh, works great on the river. I got it when I was in America. A fantastic pattern. Mm, it works great on lakes. It works great everywhere. Now, you can tie it on a jig hook. You can tie it on a curved hook. Really your own personal preference. Sometimes I'll tie it on a jig hook if I'm using a smaller fly. Uh, this is a size 10, fully mill. Check nymph, barbless, black nickel, you know, bronze, black. As I say, it's your own preference what you want to tie it on. Now, the other thing I'm going to use here, because it's quite a big hook and I want it to go down quite fast, 3.8mm copper tungsten beads, Bidos ones again. As I say, I only use what I think is the best. Then we're going to use some candy floss, uh, sorry, not candy floss, pimp pink, uh, candy floss dubbing. It's my own stuff for the body. Now you can just tie the fly entirely using the, the squirmy material, but for me, I prefer to do it this way. Also, quick point, don't use any varnish when you're tying this fly because the varnish will eat away at the, the, the material. But that, that's the material. You can see how far it stretches. Really, really stretchy. And I've caught a lot of fish on this, especially in the UK. Now, as you can see, I've not put the bead on yet. I tie it a little bit different to some other guys. So I'm using Wisp Burnt Orange Thread 14 -0. So what I'll do is I'll just put thread on. So we're not going to go right down the hook shank. I'll take about an inch of the material. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll just catch it in. Now this stuff can be a nightmare to work with. So I'm going to stretch it and I'm just going to wrap the thread towards the eye of the hook. Okay, I'm not going to do a lot of wraps, then what I'm going to do is catch it that way and you can see it jumped there. Don't worry about that. Okay, I'm not going to take it right to the eye of the hook. And then what we're going to do is just trim that excess off. Now at this point I'm going to whip finish. The fly isn't finished yet, so don't worry. But you can see how the, the material is really, really stretchy and it's really, really sticky, so it'll move about a lot. Right, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the hook out of the vise, I'm then going to put the slotted bead onto the hook, okay, and put the hook back in the vise. Now, what I want to do, see the way it's sitting just off centre, so just give it a twist, just actually twist the whole thing, and then it kinks up. So what we then do is we take the bead and we push the bead forward. That that's it, the front section of the fly. So we then whip the thread back onto the hook shank. Keep going. So basically the bead is pushed the material forward. If you use too small a hole in the bead, it'll probably rip the material. But that way it's pushed it forward and it's holding it in place, as you can see. You've still got access to the eye of the hook. Okay, so just take it back a little bit. I'm not going to go too far around the bend. Then what we want to do is take another inch of the material. Okay, then we just sit it on. Same again, same procedure. A couple of wraps going back the way, and then this is a tricky bit because the camera's in the way. Right, I'm going to take that back off because that bit is trying to break. So trim it off so we've got a good solid piece to, to work with and just again catch it in but not a lot of tension on that. Then we grab this piece okay so that's that's the piece we're going to cut off but you do need to get an anchor on it or what will happen is you'll just end up ripping the, the tail off straight away almost. So I'm just wrapping the thread around towards the bead. Keep going. Okay, then once you get to the bead, a couple more wraps. Hold that, swap hands, and trim it. Then we can freely run the thread back down. That says what some guys will do is they'll do this and they'll wrap that around the body. And it makes a nice fly, but what I find is it goes all over the place. It's really hard to work with. Uh, plus, if you, you put too many 
you don't want to tie too many of these flies at the same time because what will happen is you get some kind of reaction and all the, the squirmy will burst so that's why I don't wrap it around there because it ends up going and it's all over the place I'll show you an example see what's happened to that one because it's been wrapped around so that's why I use dubbing for, for the body so varnish the thread up get your pimp pink candy floss dubbing put a decent amount on nice and tight now these work this is my favourite colour but you wouldn't believe that blue works purple works green yellow orange in America the, the fish go crazy for the blue and the purple ones and this colour of course but that's the three main colours right and a bit more dubbing There we go. As I say, no varnish, because varnish will react with the material and it will break it and it will make it brittle. So, no varnish, no super glue. And that's it. Pretty simple. You can push that around because it's sitting slightly lopsided. And there you go. And then you look at this. Doom. And it's crazy. The fish love it. On the recent heat on my sniffle heat on the dawn, I caught all of my fish. All all five fish on this fly in big dirty water. But it works not just in dirty water, but it works in all types of water. So enjoy it. Please like it. Please share it. And please subscribe to my channel. Uh, and you can find my website on www fly-fishingworld.com. Thanks, guys.